So let's talk a little bit about summer lawn watering. That's very right? good. We and need we that. actually have some questions uh, for you today. Okay. okay. And we'll start with the first one. When is the best time to water your lawn? Well, the ideal time and the best time, probably early in the morning time. Okay. A lot of folks go out there in the early morning time and water their lawn, probably sometime out three or four or five o'clock in the morning. Okay. I did uh, early six or seven. You go out there and put your water hose down where you want the water, and then early that morning, you get them cut it on while you go walking or jogging or something. Right. And, and know, then you make sure that you, uh, you know, have half where you want to get on all your other plants too now. Okay. Because a lot of times when you get into our flower bed, and that's going to cause problems. But okay. early in the morning time is ideal time to water your lawn. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what happens if you water too late though? A lot of times you water too late, it don't have time to dry off. Okay. And a lot of times we have diseases get on our lawn. People wonder why the disease is on my lawn. They probably water in the, in the late in the evening time, or they water in the middle of the daytime. And a lot of time in the middle of the day, a lot of that water not getting down to the plant. Okay. So you need to model early in the morning to an ideal time because you get more water to the lawn. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Here's a common question. How much water <laughs> does your lawn need at any given time? Well, most times you need at least about one inch of water a week. Okay. You know, you want to make sure one inch a week. One okay. inch a week. You want to make sure you give it that all at one time. A lot of time I see folks out there in the morning time or in the evening <laughs> time, get a little water hose and just start doing it for about five or ten minutes. All right. And that's really doing your lawn more harm than anything else. Because you want that water to soak down into the soil, probably about one inch. One inch of good water in a week. Now you have sand in the soil, it might need just a little more than that because the sand in the soil might drain a little faster mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it costs to dry for faster. So you might, if you mostly got clay soil here. It's gonna hold that moisture a long time in there. So by one inch of water, we should be good. Okay. Does it matter whether it's a warm season grass or a cool season grass, like whether it's Bermuda, Zorgia, or a fescue? Well, most of the time we do, well, we water our grass, most of the warm season grass. Right. Cause a lot of times your cool season grass, they get enough water. But in on a shade tree or something in the summertime, you might want to get just a little more water. Mm -hmm. It's not doing a whole lot of growth doing that, but it's staying still under that shade tree. The roots are pulling that water away from your, from your lung, right. so and you need to give it a little more water during the summertime when it's really hot. But in the wintertime, you don't need to water your uh, coosie and grass a whole lot. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, here's our next question. So what happens if your lung gets too much water? The two things that happen to too much water. <laughs> One of the things that you can call disease problem get on sure. there. You know, about, like, about an inch of water a week. And sometimes if you've got a sprinkler system and it come on, you need to make sure you have a water gauge on that. Because right. if it rain, you don't want it to come on. So some people have it set anyway. If it rain, it still come on, and that can get that water, that lawn too much water. Okay. And also giving it too much water, you want those root system sometimes just to kind of get the grass to go kind of dormant, dry. They force those root system down into the ground. Mm. If not, you keep getting all that water all the time. They stand really close to the top because they got a lot of moisture right there. But sometimes you just let it go dry for a while and force those root system down into the ground. Okay. Yeah, and do that in there. So, so the deeper the roots go, for the, the better, most part, the, the tougher the grass is going to be. Right. Mm -hmm. So I don't water my grass now. I used to water my lawn, but I let it, <laughs> I let it nice, well established. And you know, during the summertime, the roots are going down into the ground looking for water. Right. That's why you don't want to, you don't want to shallow water your grass for about two or three minutes. The roots are come to the top of the soil, and the soil and the heat can kill that grass. Hmm. Cause I've seen neighbors like that water their lawn early like that, and they think I know that they begin to turn brown. It because of the shadow roots, hot sun, squash those roots up. Okay. Mm -hmm. You got that, Rick? Makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. All right, so here's our next question for you. How can I tell when my lawn has one inch of water on it? We get that call out there. Yeah. How can I tell it got one inch? How can I tell this? How uh -huh. I know I'm going to get one inch of water in there? A lot of times you buy, look, they have a can and thing you put out in, in your lawn okay. at the end of the sprinkler system and put them on probably about both sides of it, depending on what sprinkler you have, and get you a time and put on it and watch it for the first time. To see how long and mark that can, we might make an inch on that can, and mark that can when they get an inch of water in there, okay. you will know then an inch. Then you know how long it took for to get that inch. If it took 30 minutes or an hour or whatever, because some sprinklers put out more water than other sprinklers. Okay. So y'all depend on that kind of sprinkler that you have, how long it takes to get that one inch of water in there. Okay. But yeah, you get you some can put out there, whatever, water gauge or whatever, right. and try to measure that one inch of water in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. What about using the moisture meter? A lot of people do that. That'd be good to tell when your lawn do need water. You know, you want to do that to test that in there. So, yeah, that'd be really good because you don't want any water time. Like I said a few minutes ago, make sure you have your sprinkler system set from your, from your flower bed. Okay. Because a lot of times we see a lot of flower beds dead because they're getting too much water. They got a lot of mulch in the flower bed, they're holding a lot of moisture in there, and they're beginning to rot those plants out. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then one of the points that you made earlier, Rick, and you probably can attest to this as well, yeah, make sure you have a rain sensor oh, yeah. on your irrigation yeah. system because. We've all seen them, right? Going off when it's raining. in a rainstorm. Yeah. yeah. Like, come on, folks. Yeah, I, see, I didn't seen it raining yet. They got their lawn beginning to get water. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh -huh. My goodness. And that's not good. 
Yeah, it's not good. Mm-hmm. It's going to be too much water. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you, you talked about, you know, some of the sprinklers that are out there. Mm-hmm. What are some of the better kinds, though, the oscillating oh. kind or? It's all depending on how much lawn you have. Because a lot of times, lawn not made even. Okay. And a lot of times, you want to use the kind that'll fit in your lawn. Okay. Because you don't want to get the water all on the sidewalk. You want you want the water, you know, it, it, all on your all on all on your house and everything. You want the one that fit into your lawn. But the isolating kind is real good if you don't put some new you don't put some new seeds down mm-hmm. because it, it won't it won't it won't wash the seeds away. Kind of right. keep the, it won't pack them down to the soil. So you had when they're going over and over again, isolating kind, that'd be really good for new new seeds and to have new sod you put down in there. Okay. That'd be the best kind of you. But try to try to watch your lawn and try to put the sprinkler somewhere that the water's getting on, onto the grass. You don't want to water the sidewalk and all that down there. You're wasting water and also wasting money and time. Right. And mm-hmm. if you do have an irrigation system, you need to test it, right? To make sure it's putting out. Yeah, you know, it, yeah, most people have, yeah, most people have an irrigation system. They have a certain zone. Mm-hmm. You might have one zone to come on at a certain time of the year, I mean, a certain time of the day, and some time or other time. Probably you got up under the shade tree, that might be a zone you might have come on 15 or 20 minutes. Mm-hmm. Or when mm-hmm. I, in the heat and hot sun, it might come on long to get that one inch of water in there. So you want to sure you get a one inch of water in there. And you don't need to come on every day. You know, Sometimes, like you said, get, test your soil to make sure it need water before you do that. Okay. And then, yeah, no. Sometimes an inch of water might not be an inch of water for that week. Or, you know, have some rain in there and all that in there. You might get it through rainwater. Okay. So test that in there. Yeah, test your sprinkler system in there and how you have it come on in there and what zone that you have to come on at a certain time. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So another question for you. How often do I need to water a newly sodded or seeded lawn? One of the things about that, now that's a mistake. Now, if we have, I like the two. Now, if it's real hot in the summertime, I like to if we want to sod down, I'm going to put that sod down on, on really dry, hot soil. Okay. I might want to water the day or two before just water the soil, just keep, get it kind of moist like. Then quite then lay my sod. And I want to keep it real moist until it begins to jump, until it begins to catch root. And you can go ahead and catch that sod and put on it a little bit and see how it begin to catch root in there. Mm-hmm. You know then it'll caught root. And also for the seeds in your lawn, you want to make sure that you uh, keep it moist until they start germinating. Okay. Now you don't want to keep it just wet, wet, wet. Right. But you want to go a lot of time, you just want to keep it kind of moist, like early in the morning time, keep it kind of moist until those seeds germinate. And on the bag of seed, it'll tell you how many days it should take for that seed to germinate. Right. But moody right. grass seed might take seven to ten days. Uh, uh, your grass and all the different seeds take a little longer. But just know how long it should take for that seed to germinate. And, and if you can get some old seeds, put them in there, and they're just sitting there. You wonder why they seed not germinate. <laughs> right. And another thing is when do you plant those seeds? Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of times people don't plant those seeds. But moody grass seed, zoysia seed in uh, May, probably the middle of May. Okay. When the soil temperature will get around 70 degrees, not the air temperature, but the soil, soil temperature right. get around the, in there. So that, but keep that soil more, not over water, and keep it more until it begins to germinate. Right. Because mm. for the most part, seeds start to germinate when they take in water. Correct. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, keep them moist. Like yeah. Some roots and things like that. Keep, keep that moist in there. All right. Well, mm-hmm. Booger, we appreciate that information well, thank from you our lawn guy here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's great. All right. Thank you much. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. To find out more information on this topic, just click on the FamilyPlotGarden.com link in the description.